Bitcoin is what Bitcoin is because it's decentralized. It's got a 21 million fixed hard cap supply forever and ever secured by the most uh, powerful computer network in the world right now. I don't know. I'd rather put my money in that as a store of value than some politician that just says, you know, well, I listened to Stephanie Kelton and she thinks she uh, has this whole thing figured out and she works at community college XYZ. So she really must have sat in a risk chair in her life. No, no, and no. So there's three components. There's inflation expectations, there's credit quality, and there's liquidity uh, concerns. And in the case of U.S. Treasuries, which is the most liquid market in the world, there's zero liquidity concerns. In, in the, but in the case of COVID, did you know that the U.S. 10-year bond went no bid? Meaning there is no buyers within the context of the most recent bond. That is why the Fed freaked out. And they said, we'll open all the liquidity spigots to ensure that our funding. So there's liquidity concerns. Yeah. There's inflation expectations. And then there's credit quality concerns. And you'll say, Foss, you know, there's no concern that the USA will ever default. And I'll call out and I'll say, you're wrong. Because there's actually a market, which is a derivatives market. It's called the credit default swap market, where people are paying for insurance on the United States of America. And if there was no default risk, there'd be no buyers of protection against the default of the United States. Today, there's inflation, okay? Mm. So don't argue with the facts. There are is inflation today and stop with your little forecasts here and David Rosenberg, you know, the two-handed economist says, on the one hand, there's this, on the other hand, there's this. Guys, look at the mathematics, stop pretending that that math doesn't exist. So what is hyperinflation? I would interpret as inflation that's gone crazy and 14% is pretty crazy. So are we in a hyperinflation environment? Let me just say, I remember 1980 because I was alive and I remember where there were gas lines around the block because of the oil embargoes and whatnot. And I remember when interest rates were 20% because inflation was actually... 16 percent are we back there we are on an inflation front but not in the fixed income markets because the government is suppressing the level of interest rates that otherwise would be a natural occurrence in the open market D dennis this is so scary and it's so co coerced and it's so dangerous for our children and even more importantly it penalizes the people at the bottom of the privileged spectrum more than anybody because the only People that keep up to this are people who own the hard assets like real estate or gold or mm. other things whose price appears to be appreciating equities because the unit of account is depreciating. Other people hold their savings in a checking account and they're losing purchasing power daily. That is horrendous, but it is true. We're already in a debt spiral where interest rates at the US 10 year are unsustainable at 1.7%, which means the debt balloon is growing just because of the coupon at a rate where the economy can't even keep up. Imagine if you increase that coupon to reflect an inflation rate of over 7%. That means the coupon has to be eight or 9%? Come on, impossible. If you can't do it at 1.7%, how are you gonna do it at eight or 9%? This is part of the Fiat Ponzi. This is the debt spiral that they know they have no choice but to push down on interest rates, allow inflation to go crazy, and the people that pay the penalty are bondholders. I don't know where we go from here, but I am a mathematical, uh, a biased, I'm engineer by training, and I'll just tell you the math doesn't work. Okay, so it's like saying, hey, I'm gonna design this rocket ship that will never escape the gravitational pull of the, of, of, of the earth, so you are never gonna attain escape velocity, but I'm gonna pretend we are because I'm a politician that says, get on this rocket ship and we're gonna try and attain escape velocity. It's physics, you guys, it's impossible. The debt spiral is 100% assured. There is no way we will ever attain escape velocity because we never paid down the accumulated debts from the successive 
global financial crises. It's not hard to predict. It's hard to say when it will end. Mm. Okay. And I don't want it to end. So I know right. where we're going. I just don't want it to end before we have this alternative system in place called Bitcoin, which will allow us all to live a more profitable and a more genuine existence. We have a chance to make it succeed with an alternative system. I know for certain that the existing legacy system will fail. It's only math. History has shown that these legacy systems always fail. But you have these modern monetary theorists that think, oh, you know, I'm in an endowed chair, so I'm going to make this theory that it's going to be different this time. Guess what? It is not never different. Things lose confidence. And when you lose confidence in the system, the system doesn't roll over, debt does not roll over, and all of a sudden, everything seizes up and we are in a financial crisis that will be worse this time than it ever has been. So what? I got involved in Bitcoin in 2016 when the price was under two, uh, sorry, it was under $1,000 US per Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is a better investment today at 60 odd thousand dollars per Bitcoin than it was when I got involved in it five years ago. On a risk adjusted basis, I have a higher probability that it reaches my price target of over $2 million of Bitcoin. Why? Very simply because COVID happened. And COVID caused all of this other uh, talk about being responsible and fiscally responsible to become moot because there's no point. You cannot escape this debt spiral now. It's mathematically impossible. They don't want to hear it. Even a, sure. a, a, a renowned economist like David Rosenberg has not done his mathematics. It's amazing. It's really remarkable how many people fail grade 11 math. I'm sorry, I'm calling it out. It is over. It is 100% certain that your fee it will debase. Now, it can continue to debase as long as people understand that's the system. And we're going to pretend this Ponzi can go forever. I would suggest you probably should put in place some protection against that Ponzi ultimately collapsing. And that's called Bitcoin, the most beautiful technology, the most beautiful asymmetric return investment that I've seen in over 30 years of managing risk. When it comes to Bitcoin, you back in, I think it was May, you had a $2 million price prediction. Still, for it's Bitcoin. still the same. It's in, in May dollars, in today's dollars. Look, I, 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 can, I can easily get to a way higher price than that. I'll just tell you, it's got to go through 2 million before it gets to you know, 10 million. And it's also got to go through 400,000 before it gets to 2 million. See guys, I'll just tell you, don't get fancy. Okay. You think, you know, the difference it's worth 60, but not 70. Don't fool yourself. You're not that good. Nobody is that finely tuned a trader. Own your insurance, buy 5% of your portfolio in this, and then focus on the other 95% of your portfolio that you really should be worried about, okay? Because the other 95% of your portfolio is the Ponzi, and this thing's called your insurance. And you say, okay, well, if we can just print money, why do we work? If you can just print money, why do we pay taxes? That's the extreme, right? And people then say, damn, then there must be some problem with printing this money. And that's where you get into the, uh, you know, the subtleties of the, when is it too much? Well, we just passed the point of when it's too much. We can never return.